Hey everyone and welcome to episode 58 of Aussie Max Zone. We're all back in order this week after a few technical difficulties last week. So uh, hopefully uh, we see none, uh, none of that uh, this week. So uh, welcome along, Michael, and uh, thanks for uh, looking after things last week. Oh, thanks, mate. It was good. I think we're getting getting there. Good to be on your own. <laughs> Not to have me and Glenn <laughs> interfering. <laughs> I had no one to talk back to me or ask questions like Glenn does. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, we're trying some new uh, software this week, aren't we, for um, people on video with some, uh, hopefully, some new funky switching. So we'll uh, see how that all goes as well. Yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit daunting there to um, try and work out what I'm doing at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> trying to talk and press buttons at the same time. <laughs> yes. yes so that, we'll uh, see how we go. That's right. So um, in the news this week, we've uh, got Microsoft back uh, around the uh, surface with some ads, and this time they're not competing, well, uh, dissing the uh, iPad, more the MacBook Air, and perhaps as a uh, attack against the uh, new uh, MacBook Air ad of the uh, notebook people love. Uh, Microsoft are suggesting that uh, the Surface uh, can do everything the Air does, but uh, do it in a much uh, better form factor. And um, I think I did see somewhere, Michael, as well, that uh, was it up to six hundred and fifty dollar trade in they're offering for? Or it was maybe not that quite that much, but it was some large amount of money, wasn't it? It was they're offering yeah. to trade in for your Air against the Surface. Yeah, yeah, but it just hasn't got any good reviews. But then it's a it's a bit bit of a challenge there, I think. <laughs> No, and uh, you know, as uh, as the article points out here, that um, Microsoft have lost uh, 1.7 billion dollars on the device. Um, I think in the first device that they had, they pretty much wrote off a billion dollars, didn't they? So um, I'm not really sure what their you know what their end game is here. They're um, spending a lot on marketing. Uh, they're obviously not getting the scale of manufacture around it. And gee, if they're going to pay. You know, Apple uses six hundred and fifty dollars for a trade-in. <laughs> um, they wouldn't be making that much on a device, even if they were to sell you one. So maybe it's, it's a, a cheap of, a way of getting Max in at, at the office at Microsoft. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you trade in your hair, and uh, that's how they get the uh, employees uh, yeah. on board. Yeah, but so they don't um, have to use the um, the t surface at work. They can use the MacBook and be very efficient. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that that could that could well be the uh, well be the case. But um, yeah, I thought um, in the stories that came out last uh, month that there was going to be a bit of a sharper focus by Microsoft on you know perhaps getting away to things that weren't so core. Um, you know that probably included um, some stuff that Barmer had put in place just before <laughs> he left. But uh, you know I thought they were sort of going back to being more of the software company and these these things that were sort of at the periphery and weren't working so well uh looking to cut their losses a little so well, it was be interesting, interesting uh, like you say they yeah, lost so 1.7 on that and one of the reports i think this week had that the new xbox had lost them 400 million so far so <laughs> yeah it's interesting and i guess six as successful as the xbox is and has been in relation to market penetration it hasn't made them a whole lot of money at the end of the day you know it has it that you know i guess in what you sell it for uh is it much more than it costs to manufacture and uh, i guess by the time you factor in marketing costs research and development and that um sure there's a lot out there but you know it's not as though it's raking them in um you know millions or billions of dollars Maybe it's on their, um, they're getting it back in through services or software or something that that's not showing up. Maybe that shows up in a different accounting structure. Yeah, that's true. I mean, they do do uh, some game development for the yeah. uh, Xbox. Um, and I guess if you, if you were to sign up or those that do sign up to Xbox uh, Live, um, I can see how they make money out of that. Uh, that's reasonably uh, e e expensive. So, um, you know, it, it's still a pittance, you know, in comparison to what they make out of their staples in 
you know, the operating system and Office. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, I, I guess um, enterprise tools like Exchange and SQL, et cetera, um, you know, is this stuff really worth their while? Yeah. You know, you go through all this effort and um, even if they are turning over a small profit, um, you know, that's in a year they might be making out of it what they make in, you know, maybe a month or a week of uh, office sales. Yeah, yeah, but it still keeps the name there, doesn't it? Yeah, well, maybe that's the thing to try yeah. to get into the uh, in, in, into the uh, into the living room. And and just and, personally, uh, I wouldn't have thought birthday. Linux was there yet. To, you know, L Linux? No, uh, not as a, you know for every everyday person. No, I think that one's still a um, a niche market. Um, it's certainly not a day to day desktop. No, um, but it does have its app app application. Yeah. Um, but just looking here, it was someone's birthday, uh, Michael. Yes, so we're lucky enough to have, was this, I think it's 64, I think. So, yeah, and um, so we know that he was the co-founder of Apple way back when uh, with Ronald Wayne. So, and they were commenting that um, he created the five and a half inch floppy for Apple was one of his, his, uh, crowning glories that we don't sort of really take into account but um, they did it on a Christmas day they got an award and it's sort of carried over because it's an early example of the company's present high margin business model because it cost about 140 in components and they were selling it for 595 there for a while so happy birthday was well done and we can see where all our money goes now but one little thing is he's a member of a Segway Polo team called the Silicon Valley and Aftershocks. So. <laughs> yeah, well, I think that uh, was is certainly uh, very uh, active, isn't he, for his um, practical jokes. And uh, he is associated with Segway. He seems to be quite a fan of that uh, mode of transportation. And, you know, he's still, uh, you get the comments from Woz from time to time and uh, he's certainly always got something to say and yeah, uh, a few yeah. years ago he was even on Dancing with the Stars wasn't he in yes. the uh, US which uh, was yeah, uh, he... quite interesting uh, <laughs> look on YouTube if you haven't seen that probably worth a look <laughs> and uh, oh, I think uh, was his expertise we were in, and uh, skills were really in the um, technical sense I think more so than the, <laughs> more so than the dancing but well, he enjoyed I himself think, so I think he's got his sort of fingers in a lot of pies just business wise I believe. Yeah. He has look look a very smart man, obviously. Yeah. So uh, I'm sure he's made a uh, few wise investments over the year. Yeah, and, and, and if you can we've got uh, a do that, of... and I have to work all, all the better for it. <laughs> and we've got a couple of Segway um, riding places down here. There's one in, one in St Mary's that every weekend you can go Segway riding, and uh, down at Olympic Park you can you can use the Segways down there, and I'm trying to go to Canberra in October for the Florio Festival and I'm looking forward to going for a ride around the lake on a Segway. That's one of my planned trips. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Any, any Segway polo teams that you're aware of? <laughs> no, no, none that I'm aware of. I, I saw one going on a footpath on um, one of our made roads down here a couple of months ago. I think he must have been a uni student going on his way home or something. And he was tearing up the footpath. He was right into it. <laughs> <laughs> well, they go, they go quite quick, don't they? But they, do you know how much they cost them? I and they're not going to be cheap, are they? I think they're about four and a half, just off the top of my head. Yeah. Yeah. And, of course, they uh, use them on the cricket, don't they? That's, that's uh, where I've seen them. Uh, <laughs> uh, as of late, they get the cameraman rolling around on his uh, Segway uh, at, at the cricket, taking a few shots. Yeah, that's the advantage of those new stabilisers, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. So, so again, uh, whilst uh, you can enjoy us on a uh, Tuesday with uh, all your uh, Apple and uh, Mac and iDevice news, uh, remember Aussie Tech Eds, uh, where it all started. Uh, Thursday nights, uh, join Glenn and the crew, um, normally Will and Eric, um, chatting about such things as uh, NBN and uh, all the tech news for the week. So uh, tune in to us on a Tuesday and Aussie Tech Eds on a Thursday night. And uh, speaking of Apple, which uh, 
we do uh, on a Tuesday night. Um, more news around mass production of the next gen iPads with any reflection displays. So, not only with the, um, I guess, the September event where we expect to uh, hear about the new and bigger and improved iPhones, um, it's also the event where we would expect to hear about the new and better iPads. So, I guess as we're seeing lots of rumours around the iPhones, there is some coming out around the iPads and uh, there doesn't seem to be a, a change in size here. There's, it'd still be the full-sized iPad being at 9.7 inches and the Mini at 7.9. Um, but uh, mass production apparently is already uh, uh, underway, um, you know, ready, I guess, for maybe the September announcement and obviously, you know, leading up towards the end of the year and Christmas to get those sales uh, in, in the bank. Um, I guess, Michael, what have we heard around the iPads? It's, I mean, it's all been very iPhone-focused uh, as, of, as of late. Um, apart from Touch ID, are we hearing much different in terms of features or any style changes? I, th I think the biggest feature is the dual display, having two things on the display. That, that's about the only feature that I've heard. Um, what was also interesting just on the on this news article was no one wants to be identified that they've actually start manufacturing but they might be having a problem with the screens with <laughs> because of the new manufacturing process because of an anti-reflection surface <laughs> do we really have something being manufactured and therefore we're having a problem because it's being manufactured <laughs> Ah, uh, that old, that old, that old conundrum. Um, <laughs> yeah, with relation to the uh, uh, being able to display or have two apps at once, um, is that going to be supported on the older or well, previous generation iPads? Uh, I, th I think it can go on one of them. Just, I'm just trying to think back to. What I've read, I think the previous version it would, but but nothing before that. So that's only the iPad Air, then you would say, not the uh, not even the Gen Four um, iPads. No, so I guess it's to do no, with only the yeah. uh, uh, CPU and uh, GPU type uh, yeah. processing. Yeah, I'm sure it's the GPU type processing. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. Um, that's yeah. I mean, the iPad Air hasn't. Well, I guess it's been out twelve months, hasn't it? So, um, oh, I guess that's Apple's normal uh, MO that uh, you can upgrade to the latest operating system, going back a few models. But sometimes on those earlier ones, even if the iOS version supported, you do lose some of those features. And I guess that's where Apple don't want you to have a bad experience. Yeah. Um, maybe they want to. Give you a little bit of a taste, but get you to upgrade to the new hardware to, to enjoy all the features, maybe. Yeah, it's like, it's like the previous, the, the original iPad, you couldn't put that up to iOS 6, I think it's stuck on 5 or 6, I can't remember now. Well, that's it's quite old. One of them. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. It's quite old, it's probably, it would probably be 4 six, years old, probably be 6, it? wouldn't it? <laughs> I think 7 was quite a jump. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, and that sort of, uh, I guess, sorted out some of those older devices, I think. Finally, with seven, the three GS dropped off, didn't it? So, yeah, um, yeah, probably dropped off a few of those older models. But uh, so we we'll move on to yeah. this week's dull tip: um, yes. geofencing. So geofencing. What's all this so, about? Yeah, that, that's so that when you're in a certain area, uh, the phone can do something for you. So that's what they mean by geofencing. So. Uh, you can set a reminder fairly easily so that when you arrive somewhere or drive past something, it'll actually tell you so that you can remember to get your cookies on the way to work or you know the ice cream on the way home because it'll just something will come up on the screen just to just to give you that little reminder to say oh yeah I've got to do something because you always forget while you're concentrating on driving etc. So all it is is you just create your reminder. On the right hand side you get that little information eye button so you click on that 
one of the choices is remind me at location and then under that you can choose for a contact or a place name or you can type in a specific address and then you can decide all right well I want to be within a hundred meters or one kilometer of it and it'll actually say oh yeah boom get ice cream and it'll come up on the screen and it'll just that way you just know it so you won't get into trouble with the wife when you get home it's really simple and so, people probably aren't aware how easy it is to do and and the um, the advantage of it is just very convenient yes obviously using location uh, awareness uh, there um, so that shouldn't be any more draining on the battery than uh, than, than usual of I mean um, if you've got your uh, uh, you know, location awareness and that turned on. That's uh, sort of all that's required to uh, obviously drive. I mean, the phone needs to know where you are. So that's what supports this happening with your reminders. Yeah, well, I, I leave mine location awareness on all the time. I, I use maps fairly regularly now, uh, putting addresses yep. in uh, in my in my diary in the calendar app. I put the address in, so therefore I just tap that when I've got to go somewhere. Uh, so you can, it'll actually show you up traffic just by having a heavier red line or a dotted red line on the map so you can actually get an idea of whether you want to bypass something or not so yeah okay it's yeah. all the time for me uh, i have a light that come i've got um the wemo system and using if this then that service uh when i get within sort of 100 meters of home i have a light come on at home so either the family know that I'm nearly there or there's a light on when I get home and open the door. Oh yeah, 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 that's a good, good idea. It's all pretty straightforward. Yes. Well, I think that's, you know, really where um, where all this is moving, isn't it? To, um, you know, have all that context awareness. So it's not just around a date and a time, it's around, um, uh, it is around location and, uh, uh, you know, such, such things that, uh, it's really the context of uh, uh, where you are and when you are, and all of those types of uh, all those types of things. And it is slowly getting easier. You know, they talk about the Internet of Things, and it's not quite straightforward yet. You know, but we'll wait and see what Apple does about that in September, October, November, whenever they're going to start releasing that bit of software. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, their, their home automation stuff really starts to play into this space, doesn't it, as a, as a service. So uh, I guess getting other vendors on board with their products, you know, like the lights and locks and all of that home automation stuff, it, uh, it'll be really interesting to see where all this goes. Yeah, well, if, if you don't have to use 15 apps to actually get into your house when you get home, you know, an app to open the garage door, an app to turn the lights on, there's an app to open your, your lock. So if you can just sort of turn up and it all happens and they all talk together properly, it's got to be in front. <laughs> oh, absolutely. That's, that, 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 that's pretty cool stuff. Yeah. And uh, during the week, uh, I was reading a New York Times article around the, uh, uh, was it the Apple, Apple University that Steve Jobs established around, uh, I guess, the Apple Apple way of doing things into Apple's uh, um, business culture. Um, and uh, I think there's been sort of um, a little bit that's been said around this that uh, certainly around uh, the Walter Isaacson uh, biography, it was mentioned that uh, this was uh, developed to, I guess, um, ensure that the, the DNA or culture of Apple, um, you know, continued with um, uh, new employees um and i guess being very apple like little has been said as to around the uh content of these courses and you know em employees are encouraged uh encouraged not to speak discouraged from speaking whichever way you want to uh, look at it you know it's a real no no to talk about um you know uh what apple's doing and uh, what 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 happens uh at apple and so i guess these classes are no exception but uh as inevitably happens, uh, I guess people leave Apple after a period of time, so some of this stuff does leak out. And um, one of the examples has uh, come out as to um, uh, how uh, Picasso helps to teach Apple's style. And 
uh, you know, in this example, um, uh, should we use the word alleged here? You know, we, we wouldn't want to be infringing upon anything, <laughs> allegedly, um, at, uh, at uh, so-called Apple University, the instructional lichen, the um, 11 lithographs that make up Picasso's The Ball to the way Apple builds its smartphones and other devices. Uh, so for those of you um, not aware, that, um, uh, through these um, 11 uh, lithographs, I guess, um, you know, you start off with a picture of a, a full detailed picture of a um, ball and it, as it sort of progresses through to the 11th, um, it gets um, more simple, you know, down to just a few lines that when you look at it, you can see that it was a, a, a ball, so I guess it represents, you know, uh, what it should, but, um, you know, the philosophy or idea behind it is the Apple designers strive for simplicity just as Picasso eliminated details uh, to create a great work of art. So um, I guess uh, that aligns very much into, you know, I guess the Steve Jobs and Johnny Ives, um, you know, appreciation for uh, uh, for style and design, um, and uh, that's allegedly, you know, one of the uh, um, lessons there as to, you know, as a concept as to what approach Apple take, you know, around there, which uh, was quite interesting. And I guess you could really see that, um, you know, see that being the case. You know, that does does seem very Apple-like, I guess, doesn't it? Yeah, well, I think what um, I think this is partly why. We don't have to worry that Steve's not really here. Is because he's, he's set up this university to instill the the Apple philosophy. I think when when he got kicked out the first time, he sort of realised how easy it is to to a lose lose focus and b um, lose lose uh, what's the right word the the skill set. Um, and I think that's why he's got the right people at the top now, and they've all had this sort of thing inbred, like bred into them now. So it's not only one person that makes the whole whole place tick over, even though there's lots of lots of names like like Johnny and etc. that that are there, and we hear all the time. A, a company like this doesn't exist on just sort of six people. So I think that's part of what he's instilled in everybody. And just by having this and, and having, you know, obviously top quality uh, lecturers in this in, in this university, uh, I think we're, we've still got a good future. Yeah, that's right. And I, I guess it keeps the, um, yeah, it keeps that culture and ethos um, living on. And um, I did see in the article as well that, uh, yeah, where you talk about top lecturers and that, um, they are bringing in people from the top universities and uh, colleges, aren't they, in, uh, in, in, in doing the teaching. So I guess, you know, it's uh, nothing but the best in, uh, in, in Apple University. Yeah, it's something to look forward to, isn't it? I'd, I'd like to go, but I wouldn't be able to tell you that I went. So <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Maybe you have, you know. <laughs> we, would never, we would never know. Uh. Uh, so wrap it up this week, uh, a surveillance leak um, shows spyware loves Android but just can't infect Apple's iPhones without jailbreak. Yeah, they are without the jailbreak. So the, there's a company called FinSpy who makes software for people like the uh, law enforcement agencies, etc. And they've put out a list of what their supported platforms are currently and all of Android supported and all of BlackBerry supported. Um, iOS only works if it's tethered so you've got to have it tethered and do a jailbreak before you can do anything uh, Symbian's covered mobile Windows Mobile's covered Windows Phone's not supported yet um, hasn't been around long enough but apparently with the software they can get, get full access to your comms, your stored data and they can even make silent calls to listen in what your microphone's saying at the time so um, maybe that's why lots of crims have got iOS's I suppose they'd have to wouldn't they <laughs> well it would seem the uh, most um, secure environment um, wouldn't it to uh, uh, to uh, conduct um, to conduct such business um, yeah the, the interesting thing there um, 
uh, there has been a lot of discussion with the paper that was at uh, or came out around the time of blackout. I think it might have been just before that uh, Steve Gibson um, on Security Now uh, reviewed as well, and um, you know essentially a lot of the stuff around being able to get information out of an Apple device, you know, even le legitimately by law enforcement agencies, um, you know, was uh, 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 was quite uh, quite difficult, um, and it came down to phones having to be uh, tethered and trusted, um, in which case, you know, you could, uh, um, you know, see that if your phone was uh, locked and you, oh, well, you unlocked it and said that you were going to trust the, d the device, um, that uh, that's a little bit differently, you know, to um, people just being able to install bad software or just gain information out of the air off your um, off your device, which um, that story was first reporting around. Um, so, it, you know, I mean, nothing's infallible, but uh, I guess in having that balance between usability and security, um, it still seems that, um, you know, uh, Apple is certainly, uh, is certainly the best out there and um, seems to do that uh, reasonably well. Well, I think, I think with, uh, I always say it's going to be even better. So they're going to have more of a challenge, I would think. Um, and it's just something for our listeners. Maybe they should uh, just catch up with something like uh, Steve Gibson's show on, on the Twit Network or just have a look at what's coming out, just come out of Black Hat Conference and they've got DEFCON on as well now, which is um, very interesting about the sort of security situations that are happening around the world with people being able to uh, change all the blind settings in hotels or open and close doors in hotels <laughs> fairly straightforward so <laughs> there's some there's some scare there's some scary stuff <laughs> that uh, comes out of there it'll make you uh you want to turn off your your internet connection um uh but as long as i don't get access to your metadata it's all okay isn't it michael <laughs> <laughs> yeah well are we talking about the metadata that you and I know about or the metadata that the politicians talk about? They're, they're not oh, the same you know, thing, that, are that, they? That metadata stuff. <laughs> so it's not where you go, it's what you look at, but it's not what you look at, it's the websites that you go to. But, you know, <laughs> that went round and round, didn't it? It did, yes. Yeah. And how, how can they can have a co commu release a communications um, statement and the communications minister doesn't even know it's been stated. I just beats me, <laughs> or a policy, I should say, a communications yeah. policy. <laughs> That's right. Uh, well, it gave it gave us a bit of a laugh anyway. But uh, yeah, look, it yeah. will be on a serious note. We'll be interesting to see what happens there around uh, data retention and um, also the cost that might uh, add on to our phones and uh, ISP costs. If I mean, holding two years worth of data is. Uh, is is a lot so um once they work out what the metadata is <laughs> um, <laughs> that's the uh that that's the next thing right. maybe a subject for uh, uh for, for eric to take up on uh, thursday night <laughs> yes yeah but I, I know they already hold massive amounts of data um just because it's in it, it's accounting information from what I understand, that they've got to keep for seven years anyway. For example, your phone calls or that, that's all account information that they've got to keep anyway. Forgetting yeah, the metadata. You, you're, probably, just... you, you, you're probably right then from a strict, like, you know, a phone uh, perspective. Um, look, I would imagine though, from a ISP perspective, um, they wouldn't be holding that level of information. It, it, it possibly is only around the, uh, uh, cost per month that you've been incurring because most you know um, most people are on a plan you yeah. know it's not that you're being charged per megabyte or gigabyte for your you know for your home internet um, I think IINet went so far as to make a statement saying they only hold that detailed information for or any de level of detailed information for around five minutes or something in yeah. order for, you know for their accounting to, to, to clock on so obviously they're keeping an ongoing counter of how much you're using against your your, your limit uh, but essentially, um, yeah, they're not holding the metadata. <laughs> <laughs> so more, yeah, so more to be seen on that, I w w would imagine. Yeah, I think but, so. Uh, yeah. 
<laughs> but we'll, we'll, we'll see um, uh, next, by next uh, Tuesday as to uh, what's happened in the land of metadata as well as, um, uh, well as the latest on uh, Apple News. And I'm sure by next Tuesday, Michael, there'll be even more leaked pictures of uh, iPhone 6s and uh, uh, all fun stuff that we expect to see in September. Let's assuming that they're real. And it's only just around the yeah, corner. Exactly so. right. <laughs> Very good. So I'll, uh, I'll see you next week and uh, yeah, I think look we might even it. have Glenn back next week. Yeah. All the best. Thanks, mate. Okay, everyone. We'll uh, catch you next week for uh, more Aussie Zach Maxone. Thank you. Thank you.